In countries with a high crime rate, we often want to know if the gate is open, or if the gate was forced open, or if the gate was left open. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I use a limit switch to tell me the status of the gate. So say for example, the gate is opened. How do I know that this gate is open? So one way is to connect the gate to one's alarm system. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how I use a limit switch to tell me if the gate is open or closed, which is then connected to the alarm system. So if the gate is opened after hours or if it's left open, I can see it on the alarm system. This is very useful for businesses whereby the last person may leave the gate open or the battery goes flat and then the gate doesn't close properly. And then what happens is you can't arm the alarm. So you set the alarm in such a way that it cannot arm. So I'm going to show you how I go about solving this problem. I have three limit switches on display here and they all have something in common because they are all IP rated and this one is IP65 while this one here is IP66 and what that means is that they can be left outside. Even if you take a hose pipe and you aim water on this it will not allow the water to get in so this is useful for an outside gate application. Now these are called the cat's whisker which is quite obvious because this has got like a whisker and there are many varieties of these type of limit switches and there are a huge variety of limit switches but in this case I'm going to be using the cat's whisker because the gate where I'm installing this on has a platform that can interface with the whisker. Right now a quick explanation of how this works is as follows. Inside there are some terminals. Usually we have a normally open set and a normally closed set. So we usually have two sets of terminals. I've set the meter to measure continuity, which measures a short circuit. The buzzer and the zeros are telling me it's a short circuit. So I've set this to the normally closed connection. What happens is when the gate closes and brushes onto this whisker or the lever, notice that the multimeter is going offline or open circuit. And then when the gate opens, it's making a closed circuit. Now, for most practical purposes, we would actually use the opposite of that, and that is a normally open. Right, I moved the leads to the top set of contacts, which is the normally open, and now imagine the gate is closing and it brushes this lever to the side, and we can see that it is making a short circuit. So that will tell the alarm that the gate is closed, while when it's open, that will tell the alarm that the gate is in the open circuit condition or in the the gate is in the open position. So what I need to do now is just install this on the gate. Now over here at the top, there is a platform and notice that when I put the limit switch, the gate will actually brush this. So I can just show you what I mean by that. So as the gate closes, it pushes that lever and that will force the alarm into the off position or the limit switch will tell me the gate is closed. So the important thing is to determine where to put the limit switch. Now, not every person's gate has something like that. You might want to have a limit switch that works more like a button. Now for this industrial gate, I can just put this limit switch over here. There's nothing in the way here and it's quite hard for an intruder to get their hand to this part of the gate. So one's also got to think about that. You don't want to have a limit switch whereby the intruder can just override it by using their hand. So all I needed to do is drill some holes and now I can put my limit switch in place. Now here's a tip. Before mounting both sides, first check that the limit switch is working. Now the limit switch makes that clicking sound so I can still adjust this depending on where I drill the second hole. So I'll open and close the gate a few times and make sure that I'm putting this in the right place. Not only does it click, it goes a little bit past that position. So what I mean is if the click is there, make sure that the travel of the gate goes about there. So it must go a little bit past the click. So I've assessed that and this is a little bit past the click so now I can just mount the screws. Now what I need to do is wire the alarm wires to the limit switch and over here I have the alarm wires so I'm just feeding them through this gland and then I'm tightening it because I don't want insects to get inside here. So you've got to make sure that no organic matter can get inside here. Now before I wire it up, I'm just making sure with my meter that the gate is working correctly. There are the leads connected to the normally open terminals. There's the, there's the meter and if I open the gate, 
the, the system is working correctly and when the gate closes we'll see that the meter will go back to the buzzing or closed circuit position. Right, so now I'm wiring my alarm wires directly into the limit switch. There's my alarm wire wired directly into the limit switch and on this side I need to wire this wire. Now many alarms actually require a resistor, a terminating resistor. So this is true for this alarm, so I'm just going to add my resistor and this is for the IDS alarms. Right, so I'm using a resistor with mine because the alarm requires it. In your case, you might not need a resistor, but if you are using resistors and solid core wires, put some sticky putty here. And the reason being is it will just absorb the vibration. Because this is mounted on a gate, there's quite a lot of shaking. So for example, this wire bumps over and over again. Eventually it will come off. So all I do is I take a bit of sticky putty and I just put it on the wire just like this and that absorbs the vibration and it won't break off at the terminal. Now I can close this because I've got my two terminals there and this is the IP66 rated. There is the rubber washer to stop water from getting inside. Right, so there is the massive limit switch in this installation. Obviously you can use a much smaller one. Now it might be tricky where to place the limit switch and what I suggest is look at your gate and see if there are any specific surfaces that you can use for a limit switch. For example, I can even use this as a position for a limit switch. You also get limit switches which are like a finger and what happens is when the gate closes it presses in the limit switch. So instead of a lever it's almost like a press button. Right, since this is an IDS alarm I'm just wiring it to the expander board and there I've wired it to zone 6 on this expander board. Right, so there is the limit switch. Right, so when the gate is opened and the alarm is on, notice that it says violated main gate. And a nice feature is if you've set it to your alarm, you can set it in such a way that your alarm will not be able to arm if a zone is violated. So if it says violated main gate, the alarm will not be able to arm. Therefore, at your business, you will know that one of the gates has been left open. Therefore, you can't arm the alarm. Now just a note about the lifespan when using this outdoors. Notice this has this rubber and what I found is some of these even though they are saying they're IP65 and 66 I found water still gets in here. So consider using one that looks more like this where there is no rubber boot that is flexing. This I find is better than ones that do this. I find that the rubber here eventually tears and water still gets in. Alright thanks for watching and cheers.